Hey, welcome back to Die Cash Cars. So the other day, I was combing through the pegs at Walmart and there was nothing per usual, but the one thing that kept catching my eye were these price tags. I mean, $1.18 for a small little toy die cast car. I mean, how did we end up here? I mean, don't even get me started on premiums because you're talking $6. The silver line for Hot Wheels right now is up to $3. And then when you get to the really higher end stuff like green light apparently and m2 auto world you're talking six seven dollars a pop which is just ridiculous and then i'm walking through the aisle and i see this 97 cents adventure force die cast cars a lot of them are actually licensed no different than hot wheels their metal body plastic base and if you take a look at them up close, they really don't look too bad. There's a lot of good variety, like this Mercedes-Benz 190 Evo, and you got a VW bus. And as far as pack formats, you got nine packs, which Hot Wheels did away with. They're now on eight packs, but you got nine packs here. There's some five packs hanging on the pegs as well, too. But needless to say, I was sold. I had to get some of these home to take a closer look. So here is the humble haul for the day. I got seven single packs. I got two of the nine packs and I got one single five pack because I had to get that black Grand National GNX. And from a retail standpoint, I paid a grand total of $27. Basically, you got $8 on the nine packs. You got 97 cents again for each of the singles. And then the five pack was only five bucks. So definitely a bargain when it comes to die-cast cars, 164 scale nowadays. And being a generic brand, you would think that Adventure Force really doesn't have much presence on the secondary market. Well, I'm here to tell you guys that there are sold listings for Adventure Force on eBay right now. So take for example this Mercedes-Benz 190E, the Evolution, right now secondary market, it sits at $8.99. So again, 97 cent car, and it's actually somewhat sought after on the secondary market. Now, I don't know how consistent that 899 sold listing is, but the fact that you even have one data point of that is very, very intriguing, guys. And let's just do a quick compare and contrast with Hot Wheels right now. So this is the same Mercedes-Benz 190E for Modern Classics from a couple of years ago in black and i know what you guys are thinking this is car culture this was essentially a five or six dollar car and i'm comparing it to a one dollar car but let's just look at the cars in general for comparison i mean you got front headlight details you got the nice body lines of the car all etched out you got the larger rear fender flares the front fender flares I mean, if anything, Adventure Force has one up on Hot Wheels because it actually has the correct side badging for the 190E as well. They both have tail light details, although I will argue that the Hot Wheels tail lights look a lot more detailed. But you really can't argue again for the price point at 97 cents compared to this $6 model from Hot Wheels. I mean, you really do get a bargain. And on that note, Adventure Force is a generic brand, yes, but these are in fact made by Maisto, who essentially just rebrands these toy cars for Walmart specifically. But these cars, you guys might even recognize them from Dollar Tree because they're also sold as the Fresh Metals line, which I know a lot of folks have posted pictures and shared their thoughts on that brand as well too, but it's all the same company, it's all Maisto. So yeah, it's not as generic as you think. And maybe that's why the value of these on the secondary market isn't that terrible. Then you got this classic two-tone VW bus, which looks pretty representative of what you would have seen back in the 70s, right? Secondary market right now on this piece is about $2, but still, I mean, anything above retail price is technically a profit right and when you compare it to the famous hot wheels t1 panel bus and again i have a premium boulevard t1 panel to compare it to i mean there's clearly some proportional differences but again it's very comparable and it makes you think if we're so in love with the hot wheels version why can't we at least give a little bit of respect to this generic yet 
very accurate Adventure Force version. And then there's this very extreme Lamborghini in blue. And yes, I say Lamborghini because it is truly a licensed model. Even though when I first saw it, I thought it was a fantasy cast from Adventure Force. But nope, it is true to form a Lamborghini Millennial, which sounds like this is one of their concept cars and is fully electric. But nonetheless, it's a Lambo. It's licensed. And a quick little comparison with the aventador in blue i mean you can see that there are a ton of details on the adventure force and again comparable to hot wheels so again another clear example as to why we should not be passing up these adventure force just because they're quote unquote generic and here's adventure force's take on the ever popular 454 SS this a fairly recent casting for Hot Wheels and you can see Adventure Force is following in right on the hype this one a red recolor I know I've seen people post pictures of Adventure Force's black version of this car as well too but this doesn't look too bad and secondary market right now coming in at about $6.99 Porsches are ever popular and Adventure Force is jumping on that bandwagon as well too. But this being a 956 convertible compared to Hot Wheels who has given us the outlaw version hardtop. But again, very comparable. Not super proportionate between the two. But still, I mean, for the level of detail you're getting with Adventure Force, I mean, I'm saying it over and over again. It's very worth it. I mean, you even got the... Porsche Tampo decals right there on the boot. I mean, wow. For 97 cents, guys. And secondary market on this little piece right here, sitting at about $3. So from an investment side of things, it's triple your money. And you can really tell that Adventure Forest is following in on all the latest trends for Hot Wheels because look, they even have a 55 Bel Air. Not a gasser, but who knows? I'm sure that's probably in the works for Adventure Force. But nonetheless, a 55 Bel Air right now, secondary market on this is going for about $5. And then there is the GNX in black. And the only reason I bought this five pack, which probably isn't a great financial decision, but I really wanted to see this GNX and compare it to the Hot Wheels versions. But man, it looks really good. I mean, it's got tail light decals. It's got front headlight decals. It's got the little classic GNX logo there. I mean, it just looks sinister here in black. It's got that Darth Vader face. I mean, one thing I am noticing with these Adventure Forces is that they do not have interior details. So the windows are all tinted out. But again, under a dollar in today's age, I mean, as long as it's metal and it's got all the correct body lines and details, I'm okay with that. And this. It's no exception this GNX right now secondary market sitting at about three dollars so I know they've re-released this a couple of times already in different colors and different pack formats so maybe that's why the value is down but again anything above retail is a positive now let's get into some of these nine packs especially this Nissan Z which honestly on secondary market I'm not seeing anything I'm not seeing listings I'm not seeing sold listings so I'm guessing from Adventure Force this is a fairly new casting I mean in real life it's a very new car very new release so let's get this opened up to take a look at some of these cars in a little bit more detail but man let's just go right to that Nissan Z in blue it's got the samurai sword decal right here above the roof line there of the car which is representative of the car in real life and again our comparison with hot wheels a lot of disproportionate going on but look the hot wheels version doesn't even have that samurai sword decal there on the roof line but comparable rear ends a lot of details the paint on this Adventure Force is actually a lot more metallic as well too so I don't know if that's a pro or a con it's not super realistic I would say but visually from a diecast standpoint it looks really good so yeah it'd be interesting to see what the value of this one comes in maybe it's something super rare 
probably not but it's nowhere to be found on ebay the only comparable i could find was the outgoing 370z which right now sits at about four dollars so maybe this is about in that five dollar ballpark then you got this little ford bronco og ford bronco and this die cash green looks pretty good we know that the ford bronco definitely has a cult following in real life as well as the die cash world secondary market this little piece is sitting at three dollars and this is definitely a unique casting for adventure forest to be putting out in 164 but the latest generation of the toyota rav4 fairly popular among collectors i've seen this posted quite a bit a lot of people reference it as being rare not as common on the pegs right now secondary market sits at 8.99 on the higher end of all of the sold listings for adventure force and then there's this little fantasy cast from adventure force which honestly probably isn't even worth mentioning but when i saw this color scheme i knew i seen that before and then it finally clicked it's the disney's toys rc car i mean down to the wheel color the color choice the big giant wing on the back so i think that's a sense of humor from the adventure force brand that i can definitely appreciate and then in the second nine pack there's really only two cars that i really wanted to highlight the first one has to be this a90 toyota supra i just want to see how adventure force does jdm and to be perfectly honest this car is very disproportionate the headlights and tail lights painted in look a little bit careless like these headlights they just look super big and drippy but it's just nice that they have jdm representation within their casting lineup and Again, just a quick comparison with the Hot Wheels stock version of the A90. Again, I know this is a premium version, but you can see the clear differences between the two. I mean, this one I would have to give to Hot Wheels. I think proportionately they just did a better job. But again, nice to see JDM representation here. This A90 Toyota Supra right now, secondary market, sitting at about $3. And I'm sure that's due to the quality of this piece. And how about a little Chevy Blazer action, this being a yellow one. It does look pretty good, got a lot of nice details on it, although I will say it feels fairly cheap and I'm not sure why these tires and wheels are so small. But nonetheless, this is fairly popular. Secondary market sitting at $8 right now. And last but not least, you got this little gem, which Adventure Force Maisto calls the Skyrider, which is a clear replication of what we like to call the skyline or the hokoska skyline you can see a lot of similarities other than this being a tuned version i mean they both have oil coolers in the front they both got slanted headlights i mean you even got the little ducktail spoiler there in the back with the little square quad tail lights in the back but really fun and unique take on the skyline i'm wondering if maybe they don't have licensing for an actual skyline which is why they're making a very generic version of it but time will tell i mean they're clearly already making the nissan z i can't imagine a skyline isn't in the books for adventure force and then we'll see how collectors gravitate so there it is, a quick and dirty review of Adventure Force from Walmart, produced by Maisto. Is it worth your money? I honestly think it is, because at the price point that you're getting it, which is a bargain compared to all of the name brand diecast cars that we are always shooting for nowadays, I mean, at under a buck a car... You really can't beat the value that you're getting out of these because, again, it's not all generic. You do get a lot of licensing and there's a good variety of castings. And from what I shared with you guys, there is definitely a secondary market value associated to all of these Adventure Force cars. So they're definitely being sought after and collected by some collectors out there. I mean, just the few cars that I rattled off sold listings for, it comes out to a grand total of $70. Whereas from a retail standpoint, I only paid $27. And lastly, I will just throw this little idea out there for you guys to think about Adventure Force when it comes to collectability. 
If you're a mom strolling through the car aisle trying to pick something out for your kid, you're looking at all the high prices with green light and M2 and Auto World and Hot Wheels, even at that dollar eighteen, dollar twenty price point. It's just a little more than what you want to pay, especially for a child's toy that will probably get played with for a bit and then thrown away. And then you see these Adventure Force that come in at under a dollar a car. I mean, that is a bargain that I know all the moms will sign up for, which means that all these little kids nowadays are going to be playing with Adventure Force. And in about 20 years, they're going to be just like us older collectors right now and how we thought about Hot Wheels. So just think about that. That nostalgic factor in 10, 15 years might even make Adventure Force very sought after in the future. But let me know what your thoughts are about Adventure Force. Let me know if you've picked any up for your collection. Like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next time on Die Cash Cars.